Hello everyone, welcome back to French Indian War. Today I'm going to do the first five turns of Discover the New World on Easy. This game is a bit more complex than, in my opinion, than uh, Colonies at War, so I have not, as of yet, been able to try the other levels because I like to get very comfortable with the first mode in this kind of game just because of the time the time frame it goes by very fast so the first thing I'm going to look for is how valuable my land is obviously I'm not going to tear down the town to build a corn plantation but I can see that I have corn right there I've got hunting game that's like the one of the more basic ones and then the forest is good for defense and um, moderate for food but in general you want to Get rid of forests to generate more income, as long as it's close to your capital where you're not going to need defenses, hopefully, in the future. So, going to build a tobacco plantation. As you can see, there's the tobacco sign there. That is expensive, or I should say, to trade. So, it'll generate a lot of income. Um, I don't like to use all of my money to buy soldiers, but I usually try to use up the recruits here in the beginning. So that the starting army has the most resources to keep going without coming back. My favorite general is Levi here. He's got the blue background. He looks very smart, and um, I like how he levels up. And my best general is Montcalm. I usually use him first. So I'm going to go to unclaimed land. This has a fish next to it, so it's got fishing. Not too uncommon to get a fishing land. Just probably going to put fishing there. Mohawken Village. Uh, Every time I come across one of these villages, I'm like, it's so tempting just to just try and wipe them out. Ugh. Ah, I'm not going to do it. I tried that in the last game I played. It did not go well. I mean, it crippled them, but you don't want to start that much fuss early on in the game, I figured out. I'm going to take one of these things close to them so that they don't expand into my territory and rather go this way. And then I think I'll start hunting game here for now. In the turn, once I actually come into conflict, what the heck? Oh, on the French, yeah, I thought it was England, I was going to say. Eh, why not? Doesn't really matter at this point in the game yet. Although I do refuse a lot of alliances just to keep politics clean, you know. If you're friendly with a lot of Indian tribes and you don't want to jump into alliances, somebody gets mad that you're aligned with somebody. Oh, shoot. I actually might have tried that. 500 recruits. Defense plus 50. I could have taken them. Oh well. That would have been fun. Might take it next turn, actually. And then one thing you got to really watch out for is you can burn down tribes to start, in this case, fur trapping, but people will hate you for burning down the tribe because apparently... You burn down everyone in the tribe as well. So when you look at the um, the population, it says it's Powhatan. So you're burning down all the Powhatan people. Or at least, I like to think of it that way, but I'm guessing you're just, you know, depriving them of a home. If you do that, the Powhatan tribe finds out and they don't like you. So... I won't be burning them down 
just yet. But of course, if I could, in at any point in time, wipe out the Power Ten tribe, then I'd probably finish them off. Because uh, you can see the beaver on both of those things. Fur trapping is very expensive, so generates a lot of income and also food. So that's the that's the main reason I took them, but it'll take a minute to actually burn down the tribes and get it done. At this point in the game, I just want to grab as many furthest out territories as possible to basically give myself wide perimeters that people have to follow. It looks like there's unclaimed land here too. I wanted to keep these guys taking down tribes, which slows their progress because they have to actually fight the tribe and then rest. So I think I'm going to recruit another army, a smaller army, under whatever this guy's name is, to go take some of the other land. Because another tribe's going to swoop in and take it, and then they'll be right on my tail. So I'm just going to claim some of this land. He's out. Alright, moment of truth. I'm going to try and swipe their, <laughs> their village here. I think I'm good. Even if I do, I think I'm good. I think I'm protected. Let's try it. <laughs> I don't think he has another tribe at this point in the game. I think I can just take him right here. I think he's finished. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I failed horribly last time, but I guess if you wait until their main army's gone, you can do it. It's actually a pretty good tactic. I should probably apply that more often. Here come the Mohawks. They're usually troublemakers. I gotta watch out for the Mohawks. Alright, um, looks like they're going to take the French tribe here. That puts us right in a position to crush the last army here. Can't allow them to come back. So I got to swipe all their territory here. Could ambush this little army here, so I'm not going to send Levi. If your general dies in combat, he's just done. So you always got to watch out. You know how far you're letting them go out. If they get trapped in enemy territory, then they're done. All right. Sometimes they can move four spaces, but in other cases. They can't. And I'm not entirely sure of all the cases in which they cannot move forward. But I know one of them is like... If a general moves one space in one army, and then you discontinue that army, and start moving another army somewhere else, a new army that you built, it's still going to remember that last time that he moved, and he's not going to be able to move again, so... You can't always count on him being able to move four spaces. So I always account for that. There are a lot of factors. So now I've cut them off here. They'll probably still attack here, but... I've got to make sure that they don't reach the village. I don't want to have to take that thing twice. One thing that's more complex in this game, in compared to uh, colonies at war, is... Since it's a smaller area, in some cases, 
You know, instead of territories, we have, like, you know, little plots of land. Like we do in, um, what's it called? So, in here, it makes sense for armies to be able to travel farther. So, uh, they can run through a whole lot of your territory, a whole lot of your income, in just one turn if you leave an opening. So, if you ever declare war, you should have a plan to, you know, shove their armies back into one spot where they can't blitz into your territory. And effectively through it. And it also comes to your advantage, because I just took the entire Mo uh, Mohican. I think it's Mohican. When I was a child, I pronounced it Mohican. I don't know which one it is, but I realized there's an I in there, so it's probably not what 10-year-old me would have pronounced it as. In any case, I'm going to fire on them first. And this tactic is very, um, very useful when you have cannons on your team. At least 50 cannons, and you can boost the number of men dying from firing on them by about, like, I mean, it'll go up to 200, 300 men. So it's a very effective tactic. Even without that factor, it's a very t effective tactic. And that's it for that tribe. Now, see, I've taken both of their lands. Well, I have both my land and theirs. And since I have good relations right now with the relatives to my territory, I can gain a lot of income off of all this once I start building on it, burning down these forests and using them. Well, that's funny. This thing doesn't have a special... Oh, I see. It's hunting. So, for example, I'm going to clear this land. Game hunters. I can clear this land. Game hunters are everywhere, so it's not really worth saving the land just for game hunters. You want to save the land if it's like tobacco or something. You definitely want to save that and put tobacco there. But since this is just game, I'm going to put a homestead down here. Oh. Stand corrected. I will later put a homestead there. Um, so now I can burn down anything that has a population of Mohican. Um, but not anything else. Because those tribes are still alive and they will hate if I burn down their people. So, so I'm going to do this turn. Probably, like, almost never want to leave a land empty and open because that's just lost income. Really no reason to leave it blank. What? How is he alive? Okay, since I don't know where he is, besides in his main tribe, I should probably make peace with him. But I don't know why he's talking to me when I killed him. Wow. That's... Ah. Uh, that's crazy. You know, it's funny. That actually happens a lot in here, since you can't see the rest of the map. They'll pull a fast one on you, you'll think you got him, and then they'll contact you the next turn. So, um, looks like I'm on turn five now. Oh, he's destroyed. Thank you. Thank goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. I thought he was I thought he was still around. Yeah, he's gone. So you see, by by turn six. By turn six, I already took down an entire tribe. I have a huge chunk of the map. Acting swiftly and decisively on the first few turns is how you get a grasp on this game, but really there's going to be catastrophe mid-game every single time because people will start hating you if you get too powerful so this game is really complex it's far beyond colonies at war i'd say but it's really fun to play in some ways more but i can't say too much colonies at war is a masterpiece that's about it for this video so uh thanks for watching